Welcome back everybody to the 7th video tutorial for the Netgear Aircard Smart Cradle model DC112A. Uh, this video tutorial will basically show you how to access your USB storage drive that's plugged into the Smart Cradle uh, via different means. Uh, first of all what you need to do is plug in your USB drive into the USB 3.0 port in front of the Netgear Aircard Smart Cradle. Uh, and once you've plugged in your USB storage drive, just uh, have a look at the USB LED, which is located next to the power LED. Um, if the cradle has successfully uh, read the USB drive, um, you should see that LED lit up green. So once you've confirmed that the LED is green, what you need to do is firstly set up uh, the APM profile to Telstra.extranet. Um, you need to have an APN which is providing you with a real IP address. Um, so by default, Telstra provides the Telstra.internet APN, uh, which is a default profile cre created on our mobile hotspots. Um, that particular APN profile uh, sits behind a firewall, which is usually NATed, um, so it doesn't provide you with a real IP address. Um, in order to get uh, Telstra.extranet um, provisioned on your SIM card, uh, what you need to do is call Telstra on 12511 um, and ask the operator to add the code GPTEXB3 uh, added to your uh, SIM card, uh, which is the code that's displaying on the the screen at the moment um, so once the operator has added that particular code to your SIM card uh, that will allow you to uh, provision the Telstra.extranet APN through the mobile hotspot so what you need to do is bring up your web browser um, and to uh, get to your mobile hotspot it will be 192.168.1.1 or m.home uh, once you're in, you can log in with your admin details. Um, so the default uh, password is admin. Um, but if you have modified that and you have forgotten your uh, admin password, you'll need to reset your uh, mobile hotspot back to factory defaults. Um, so once you've logged in, click on settings. Uh, then click on network and click on APN. And what we want to do is we want to add a new APN profile, which is Telstra.extranet. And this is the default profile that comes with your uh, your service. So uh, Telstra.internet is a default profile. But we will add a new one. So the name, I'll just name it Telstra Extranet. Uh, the APN is Telstra.extranet. And we'll leave everything else as default. Click on save. Uh, so one thing I'll quickly show you is uh, when you're with when you're on the Telstra.internet profile, uh, which sits behind the firewall and is usually netted, you'd probably get a, a 10 dot address. Um, then once you switch over to the Telstra.extranet profile. should see uh, a 120 address which allows you actually which is a, a real IP address um, displaying on, on the internet so that basically shows you how to provision the APN profile uh, we'll continue with the rest of the tutorial you would open up your web browser uh, and you would access the web UI once again by typing in 192.168.100.1 or netgear.cradle um, and you need to log in with your admin login details so if you've modified and, and forgotten your admin login details uh, the only way around it is to actually factory reset through the reset hole um, or if uh, you've set, left it at default settings um, you should be able to locate your login details um, underneath the cradle on a label uh, it should show you the default admin login and password so once you've logged in you click on advanced click on USB storage to actually expand the menu and then you can click on advanced settings 
So here it shows you a, a number of ways to actually access your uh, USB storage drive. Um, so you can access it whilst connected to the cradle uh, or if you've got a public IP assigned to the cradle you should be able to access it from outside the network um, and here are a couple of options that you can enable to um, access that USB storage drive. So if you've watched my previous tutorial on setting up dynamic DNS you can see that uh, you can actually use the dynamic DNS hostname uh, instead of actually trying to locate what the WAN IP address is um, and basically to enable it you just need to tick the check boxes here and then click on apply so you can actually access it by HTTPS uh, by clicking on that link on port 443 uh, you can access it via FTP so if you've got uh, an FTP client or software that's you know, installed on your PC uh, you should be able to log in using that particular host name right there. Um, easy way to access it whilst connected to the actual cradle itself is to just copy the share name right here and open up another tab in your web browser and just paste it, press enter and that will bring up the files that's currently on the USB drive. Uh, important thing to note from here, you can only download and view the actual files that are on the USB storage drive. Um, if you're actually wanting to uh, modify the USB storage drives, if you want to delete some files, uh, add some files, the best way to do that is to actually open up your Windows File Explorer. And in the address bar, just type in slash slash ready share, hit enter, and it will bring up the USB storage drive there. Double click, and that will give you the access to actually modify what's on the USB storage drive. So you can delete and uh, add files just by dragging and dropping or copy and pasting. Um, and that's how you do it via the Windows Explorer. So now if I wanted to access the USB storage drive that's plugged into the Smart Cradle remotely, uh, I can just copy and paste this link here, https uh, colon slash slash video tutorial test dot dot com forward slash shares, press enter, gets me into the USB storage drive. That's pretty much the uh, conclusion of this particular tutorial. I hope it's been helpful for you guys and uh, thank you again for watching.